مشاهدينا الكرام اهلا وسهلا بكم في حلقه جديده ومميزه من برنامجكم الوطني رواد الاعمال وكما عودناكم في كل اسبوع ان نستضيف كفاءه جديده ومن زاويه سبيشال بزنس مان بليز ويلكم مستر انتوني ذا مانجينج دايركتور اوف ستيب باي ستيب اوتو سبير بارتس So welcome, Mr. Anthony. It's such an honor being here with you today. Thank you very much. So firstly, can you tell me more about yourself and how did you start your business and how did you achieve success in it? Um, actually, my name is Anthony. I'm from Nigeria, <coughs> from the eastern side of Nigeria. I um, arrived here in Dubai in 2002 and uh, absolutely I came with nothing. So I came like every other people that normally come here to seek for greener pasture. So I worked first with um, a company called uh, Maximo Advertising mm. as a cleaner and as a helper on an advertising company. This Maximo later become the sponsor of my first company, which is this step by step in 2007. So from Maximo, I worked with Al Basha Sum Trading for barely one year <coughs> before I resigned and start like an outdoor sales person. So on the process, usually I have a little experience of author's papers from Africa. So I was going around as a salesperson and I noticed that author's papers is a business here which many Africans normally come here to buy. So having a, a little bit experience of that, I decided to contact my people back home and advise them that author's papers is very cheap here, you can buy with small amount and you can make your profits. So I advise them if they can, let them send their money to me. I will buy the goods and I will send, I will find a means to send to them back home. So just like that we started. The first business I believe I had was sent, the, a friend sent $800 and I bought the goods and sent to him. After selling the goods, he made a good profit and then he made a good profit and then he decided to send more money and then from there I try to call others and tell them to go ask this guy I've buy for him and I've sent to him and he have sell and make profit. So gradually we start this way and most of the goods, <coughs> most of the customers were sending the money for me to buy the goods. At a time um, that was that was starting from 2004. Then I did it for three years without office, without anything. I was doing it alone. So I just, they will send the money through the local means. I will arrange the cash and I will go and get the goods and I will send the goods to them. So after three years, I decided to have an office, which was this step by step in 2007, June. I established the office and by then, I don't have the money for the office. But I rented a shop, a small office, behind Coral Lorenta Hotel in Knife Road. And then I started the business, like letting people know that I start sending through social media, through uh, uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. So I keep informing people from different parts of Africa, those I know that are my customers are coming from different parts. So we start just the business like that, empty handed. And then along the line, after one year, I was able to get a huge number of customers. So I decided to be doing the shipping also for them, instead of sending it to the other people. So I will arrange the cash, I will collect the cash from the customers and I will go and arrange the goods from the suppliers and I will make up, up to one container. I will rent the container from a forwarding company, yeah. I will just stay anywhere around charger, I will keep the container and I will load the goods myself. After loading the goods I will close it and I will send it to Africa. I will get the bill of loading, I will send it to them, I will advise them how to do that. So at first it was very difficult, but alhamdulillah, God was on our side. I was able to conquer because there was a big issue that arise at the first shipment due to the documentation. I'm not familiar with it, but I took the risk and I was able to succeed. So from there, a lot of people started calling. So uh, on 2010, around 2009 or 10, I decided to have my own shipping company. Mm -hmm. which is called Step by Step Marine Cargo. That was in Chaja, that was 2010. So we have that office in Chaja Industrial Area 7. Now it's a size of 90,000 square feet. So 
And that was when we start, I started communicating directly with the shipping line. So we have contracts with shipping lines like PIL, like Mass Line, CMA, a lot of shipping lines. So I went to them, I tell them I can give them more business if they can give me better rates. Mm -hmm. So we had an agreement. They were giving me the containers and then I will, I will buy the goods and I will ship it. So some customers, I advise them to come when they have bigger money account. So they come, they send the money into my account. When they come here, I will bring out the cash and I'll pay them. I'll give them the cash and I'll take them around the market. They will buy the goods and then they will stuff. I'll bring the container and they will stuff it. Together I will do it, the work with them. So we started like one, two containers every month. Handler today we are having like more than 100 containers monthly. So when that started, um, I noticed that at along the line, when I started the office, I started with only one staff. That was her name was Nori. She's a Filipino lady. She, she worked with me for barely uh, five years or six years. And from there, we have other staffs. Today, alhamdulillah, we have more than 100 staffs. And then when I was doing this uh, um, container, when I buy the source, the goose, I rent the container, I load the goose and I ship. I noticed that one of the guys who was helping me to transport the goods, he told me, you are having more containers, why not buy the truck? I told him, I don't have the money to buy the truck, I can't buy truck. So he said, I will help you, I will connect, my he's a Somalian guy. So he told me, I have one of my friends, he have a transport company, big trucks, I can help him, I will tell him to give you one truck on credit, then you pay him on installment means. I said, okay. I would like that. So, but before then, I've been working with one Somali guy, or sorry, a Sudanese guy, who is usually, he, he's a police guy, but he has his own truck. So he used to help me to transport these goods. So at the time I told him I got another guy who want to help me to give me a truck. So he said, okay, no problem. If you're happy with him, you can go with him. So I, that guy, the Somali guy, he connected me to one Mr. Yusuf. Yusuf is his name, He's, he has a transport company and he had a lot of trucks. So he told him, this guy, can you give him truck? And I said, okay. Uh, Mr. Yusuf said, okay. So he invited me to his office in Nasa Square. So I went there and we had a deal that he would give me a truck. Uh, I'll be paying him installment. We agreed on the price. Then I told him, I don't have the driver. And he said, okay, I'll give you one of my driver. His, his, the name of the driver is Barat. And Barat is working with me now for barely 14 years, still working with me till today. So I said, okay, he sold the truck to me and he gave me one of his drives, so I'll be paying the driver. So along the line, the truck ran for only six months. So one day I was sitting at my home, the driver called me that the truck got burned along the road. I said, what happened? Do you have an accident? He said, no, there was no accident, just that the tire blast, the front tire blast and the whole container, the whole truck got born together with uh, the container. That's okay. So after a long process, I went back to Yusuf and he gave me another truck. He said, okay, I will give you another truck. You continue with this second truck. Again, also, as you are paying me on the second truck, you will be paying me partly on the first one that had gone born. I said, okay, we agreed. So that was how I started with the truck. Then we got our own truck. After I finished the payment of the first and second, I went to Volvo, Alfetem. Mm -hmm. So I told them, uh, I've been using Man Desert. Look at the company that they have been supplying me the truck and I've paid them for two. I think that was three trucks I, I took from uh, Yusuf and I paid him. So Alfetem agreed to give me Volvo, which is new. So they gave me the new, uh, he, he directed me to one bank, Emirate MBT. So they, finance the truck for the first Volvo. Mm -hmm. So after the one year, I was able to have like five units of Volvo, all new. So as we go on by around 2013 or 14, uh, I used to, usually I used to rent a crane that normally come and lift the container after loading it because it's always in. They used to lift it up and then put on the trucks. So, uh, one of the guys who was usually who was driving the crane that usually helped me to lift the container and put on my truck, 
he told me, why not buy the crane yourself instead of renting our rent, spending money to buy the crane? I told him, crane is very big amount. I cannot buy such. It's very expensive. He said, I can help you. I said, how are you going to help me? He said, I'll help you to arrange for used one at a cheaper price. I said, okay, like how much is going to cost? He told me like one million dirham. Then this is a big amount of money. I cannot have, cannot arrange this money. He said, okay, let's just find it. We see. I said, okay, so I assigned him and one of my driver, which is Barra, the first driver, to go around and see if we can get something cheaper. So and like, to cut the story short, we were able to get a Tadano crane, which was financed by Mass Oris. It's a finance company. So we bought this crane 1.5 million dirham on the we paid at a 20% down payment and uh, mass finance mass orders finance the truck. So the the crane, that's fifty ton cadano crane. And that is how we own our own crane since two thousand fourteen till today. And then those units of uh, uh, trucks. So then along the line, I noticed that my work is not something I alone can do. So I decided to bring some some guys from different parts of Africa. I teach them how I start the business, how to do the marketing, how to contact the customers to send money. Yeah. But I will tell them they will have to work under my company, under the salary, on agreement that they will not misuse the customer's money because all these things should be a responsibility to me. Okay. So we agreed. I, like uh, along the line, I established offices, but that was first when we have the staffs. So I told those guys, I bring them to Dubai, I give them accommodation, I give them visa, I employ them as our staffs. Then I train them how to go to the market to meet the suppliers to get a cheaper rate and then communicate with our our brothers out in Africa. Mm. They will send the money, we will buy the goods and then we will make the container for them. So we started with Nigeria and from Nigeria we went to Ghana and today we have two companies in Congo, Kinshasa. And then from Congo, Kinshasa, we went to Congo, Brazzaville. And today we have office in Congo, Brazzaville. From Congo, Brazzaville, we went to um, Tanzania. And today we have office in Tanzania. And from Tanzania, we went to Cameroon. Today also we have office in Cameroon. Wow. And from Cameroon, we went to China. And alhamdulillah, today we have office in China as well. So, and uh, we keep, I keep educating them how I started. And then they follow my footsteps and today we were able to make up to this company. So along the line, when we see that the business is not something I alone can handle, so I begin to employ uh, like the Filipino girls. One of them, the Clarice Diaz, she is working with me now for 11 years. And the other lady, Hannah, she is also working with us for about eight years. And uh, we've been doing good by the special grace of God, but also we have been facing a lot of challenges. But by the grace of God, we're able to tackle our challenges and keep going. It has never been easy. But today, due to the system or the policy I adopted from the beginning and advised them, this is the way we have to work. We serve the customers. Our end target is to make the customers grow. Once the customers grow, indirectly we're growing with the customers. So we have this policy always to make the customer's business perfect. And then he will be happy to come back again tomorrow to do the business with us. And then today we are having customers from all these parts of the countries I told you we have branches. Because why I want to keep branches on these countries where we do the business? Because it's easy for them to communicate with us. They will go to our office. If there is any challenge they are having, they will discuss it with our team in our office in the location. And then our team will communicate with us. So immediately we have to take care of the customer's problem mm -hmm. and then somehow they keep enjoying our system of uh, service to them thank you very much okay so nextly firstly wow you have such great accomplishments i mean you have been through a lot you started from rock, rock bottom and mashallah you hit here so can you tell me what kind of services do you specially provide here in Step by Step? Yeah, actually, like I told you before, first we start like source of goods. Yeah. We are starting with only spare parts, but today 
we do source of goods for every type of thing, the boat building materials, mm. including the spare parts we start with, we, we uh, go even to foodstuffs like rice, we go into, even to cosmetics, just name it, whatever you say this is what I need from Africa, because we keep going to the market, search for better suppliers with good rate, then we post the information to Africa, we have the customers, and when we establish our offices in in different parts of Africa, we advise them to go and know what the customer need, what is the power, what are the type of items they need. They will get the information and they will bring to us and give us the best price. And then we go to the suppliers and negotiate better than that price. And then we tell them we can give you this. So some of them, if they are doubting, we give them visa. We tell them come. Would they come to us? We go to the together with the to the company. Mm. We will get the goods. They will pay and then we will ship it for them. And then with that, they will start the relationship. That's really great. So, as you know, here in the United Arab Emirates, it's such a big market and there's a lot of competition. So, can you tell me what makes you so special? Um, actually, from my own understanding, yeah. I, I built this inside me from beginning. My target is for the customers to grow. Mm. We always target how to make this customer grow from small because I know from beginning I know so many of my customers till today they started with like a small business of maybe seven cubic centimeter of the container not like full like three quarter of 20 feet but handular today I know those customers because it's like almost 17 18 years I know from beginning I used to they used to send small money I would buy the goods and send to them I told you the first business was $800. I know one of them, he sent $500 from beginning, the first time. But today, alhamdulillah, he have, he's loading more than three containers and have very big mansion he have built from this business. So that is always, my mind is always how to make these customers grow. And I know if the person is loading like seven, uh, five line previously, like quarter of container, and today he's loading 10, 15 containers, that is my profit. So I always target for them to grow. It's not if sometimes we have faced a lot of challenges on the business along the line, like due to maybe wrong documentation or mistake of the customer or something. I, I decide to sacrifice to pay for that bill instead of the customer to pay. Because that will remove his pain yes. and will also help him to, instead of cutting his little profit, he will save that profit and I will be at the loss. But I know inside him, he will always think, how can this guy pay my bill? Because I know they, there is other business companies like me who are doing the same. So, because, but one thing I know that is different that none of those companies will accept to take responsibility of the customer. But this is one of the things we do to them. Some certain expenses or loss will bear it. It might be sometimes it's huge, but Inside me, I have in mind that I want to win this guy. I want to show him something that other people cannot give him. Yeah. So at the end of the day, he will feel comfortable and he will know. We call all our humans. If somebody take care of my body, I will never forget that person. So I have that in mind that if I take care of his body, he will never forget to work with us. Though not all of them came back, but still, in the spiritual realm, he's still helping us to keep our customers still today. We hope you will reach higher and higher standards. Alhamdulillah. So nextly, as a professional businessman, can you tell me what are your future plans? And where do you think you'll see yourself in five years from now? Um, well, I, I've seen that, like you said before, there's a lot of opportunities here. And we have yeah. seen it because first, I didn't have in mind that today we might be going to buy other, source other goods for other customers. So. And uh, day after day, I noticed that the more you involve some good, talented brands or people into the business, it helps to grow the business. So that is why we have a lot of staffs. We have on the documentation side, we have on the marketing side, we have on the lot of departments we have now in the system, in our business. So, and each and every one of them contribute immensely they contribute so much into the growth of the business because 
I might be the customer. This customer might be coming just for because of the way I, I treat him. But so not all the customers is coming just because of me. Because we are many, so some of the customers is coming either because of this person or because of this person, the way he treats him. So the more we are more, the more we are growing. So I believe today or in the next five years, we have in mind of creating the same business we are doing in a bigger volume. Have an expansion like now we have this uh, our warehouse charger. Industrial area, which I said is 90,000 square feet. So, we're also planning to establish maybe by end of this year another same office, same size of company, which will be run to, but to also for other com other countries. Because recently we tried to communicate with some other countries and they were happy to work with us. Mm -hmm. But first, we decide to put it to a stop until we get the right amount of power to manage them when they start coming. Because uh, I know the volume we are managing now in our health warehouse is enough we can able to handle. So uh, that warehouse, as big as it is, is always filled with goods, always, any given time. Even during the coronavirus, it's always filled. So since we communicate with some part of Africa and they said they want, they are interested in the business, so we have to get a bigger space and uh, strong and competent staffs. So I believe from now to the next five years, I believe God will be bigger than what we are today. We hope That's you my hope. Best. We hope you all the best, of course. Thank so you. can you share with us the locations and how to contact you? Um, actually, the location, like I said before, our office uh, branch is uh, in Chaja. That is the warehouse. Uh, it's just behind uh, opposite. Chaja College roundabout, that is behind Safi Mall. Mm. Safi Mall, that is our our uh, warehouse in Chaja, and then we are having another one now, industrial area two, which is the new one we are looking towards to establish for the new other branches of Africa. That one is also around like forty-five thousand square feet uh, yard. So this is our main office. Mm. This is our office. We have our branch uh, behind here also. And uh, as well, you know, uh, part of the uh, activities we added in our business was we have like it's, we have step by step restaurant. We don't because most of the times when the Africans were coming in China, they they prefer that our local food. So we decide to establish uh, a restaurant, which is purposely for African foods. So we have one here and the other one in China also to give this these customers whenever they want to come here they see the our local food they can eat. So our restaurant is here we have also a small office which is branch of step by step auto swipers. It's uh, in just in front of uh, uh the Air Park Hotel. Dear viewers the contact number and websites will appear below on the screen. So lastly, we from ABC Al Arabiya, we thank the UAE government and leaders for the blessings they provided us with such a safety, luxury and the business environment we live in here today. And we want a special thank you from you as well. Thank you very much. Um, actually, um, the UAE government have given a lot of opportunities, not only to me and to a lot of people. So really, like the country is so safe and so wonderful in everything. Most of the times we decide, like I've seen, I'm sorry, but that is a fact. I told myself that definitely I will have my retirement here. You know, most of us, when we work here at a certain age, we decide to go back home to retire. But due to the situation of most of our countries, we living here, find here so safe and so comfortable. I brought my family here 15 years back. Then I don't have the money to pay for the rent, but I have the confidence in myself that I can stay with my family. That's what gives me so much joy and happy. That is why I decided to, uh, from here we all decide that our retirement is going to be here. If the country gives us opportunity, because of the peaceful atmosphere, the environment is so calm, well secured, not where you will be staying and tomorrow, you are scared of who you are living with. So the government have done so much wonderful and 
regret and uh, uh, our people used to say if somebody is doing good tell him that he is doing good so that he can do more they are doing perfectly well and that is my uh, what I say what that is my vote of thanks to them they have been wonderful and they have given a lot of people opportunities like myself Thank you so much for this amazing letter Welcome. and thank you as well for having us here today. It was such a pleasure. Welcome. مشاهدينا الكرام إلى هنا ونختتم حلقتنا لهذا الأسبوع. تابعونا كل Friday and Saturday on ABC العربية and our social media. دمتم بخير.